Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 10 of the Novid Notes podcast, where we interview VR chat creators, community leaders, and many more amazing people inside the platform. I'm your host, Novid Player, uh, and here with me today, we have the owner of the Ruby Beyond Tourney Remnant VR Roleplay, Aaliyah. Hello! So welcome in, welcome in. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you've been in. You know, I we probably said about thirty minutes worth of uh, you know jibber jabber because uh, <laughs> this is the first time uh, I forgot to pay the rent. So uh, Sirix unfortunately, uh, Sirix unfortunately kicked me out. Um, totally, totally a joke, by the way. Um, but welcome to the podcast. Uh, ho- ho- hope you're doing well. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So. Uh, let's talk, you know, let's talk about the community. So for the viewers at home, you know, give a brief description of what exactly is, uh, the Ruby beyond our Ruby tournament, Ruby <laughs> tourney beyond remnant role play group. That's, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one gun. Tell, <laughs> gun, tell the audience about it. <laughs> okay. It is actually Ruby journey beyond remnant. So if you're looking at the font, if you're looking at the font, that's the Ruby type of font that we use. So Ruby Journey Beyond Remnant is a multi-canon crossover, um, canon AU uh, roleplay that we feature different series, non-Ruby series, like uh, different series and franchises that we are planning to be adding later. So the roleplay does take place uh, in an alternate universe. So if you, of course, haven't now watched the show, it does take place right after the fall of beacon uh from volume from volume free and uh team ruby who are the four girls ruby ruby weiss blake and yang they're now professors uh at beacon academy and they are teaching the new students to be huntsmen and huntresses so they can try so they can try to save the world from any danger gotcha gotcha <laughs> so first of all mouthful um <laughs> but yeah no it's <laughs> <laughs> I say it's definitely uh definitely an interesting concept. So my my first question to you is um what exactly like got you the motivation to start a Ruby roleplay inside of VR chat? Well, of course, I have been a Ruby fan since since the beginning since 2013. And um, I've been watching a lot of the episodes and volumes. And of course, I've been, and of course, I said, Whoop. like, at first, I remember I, I, I really want to try role play. So there was this, there was this Ruby role play I attended and been a part of for two years. And of course, I got to create my own character, my own, my own OC. So my, my OC is Mystic, which I'm still currently playing in my other role play server. And <laughs> it was really fun. It was really, I had a really great blast with them, but, um, but uh, but I just want to try it out to myself and, you know, want to try to move some things. Like, even though if I want to be here for, like, another year or two, I'll, like, you know, um, I'll I'll just, I, I'll just like, you know, tell them I might not come back. I might do my own thing. They, they, they're really supportive, uh, the people that I previously worked with. Um, they were really supportive, and they want to make sure that I <laughs> make sure that I'm doing really well and all that kind of stuff before I, before I left their ruby server to start my own ruby server so the inspiration is i've been watching the show for like uh, for 10 years actually (laughs) and um it's been you know i've been a fan of it and all of a sudden i'm and now i have this amazing of rp and yeah it's great (laughs) fair enough yeah no that's uh, 10 years that's a that's definitely a long time now now not to (sighs) sad sad alert I do recall, if I remember correctly, in the in uh, the latest of the social media pop culture world, uh, I do recall there being an issue with the Ruby series, um, in regards to like it being continued on. Is that still? I I don't know. I don't know much about the series to be to be fair, but uh, I did hear I did hear that there was something going on. Uh, what do you do you remember what that exactly was? Yes, I remember. So, um, the the company who produced like Ruby, also Red vs. Blue, Camp Camp stuff, Rooster Teeth, they shut down. They are shutting down after 21 years, and they're trying to find a way to try and find a way to find a new home from di- from different for their different products. 
So right now, the team, uh, Kruby, that's, of course, the term for the crew of Ruby, um, the behind the scenes guys, um, they're trying to, you know, find a way to, you know, make sure that volume 10 goes on because they haven't greenlit volume 10 yet. Because right now they're they're doing like um they're doing some Ruby content like for example they're doing Ruby Ruby Volume Nine and Beyond which is actually a uh, which is actually a mini ser- mini series about um what happened after vol after during and after Volume Nine and of course <laughs> and of course doing that as well so right so right now it's somewhere in the middle but they're still gonna try to find a way how to make sure Ruby gets a nice home and making sure everything's going really well before uh, Rooster Teeth shut down completely. Yeah, no, I definitely wish the best, you know, in that regard. Uh, so kind of going into um, the Ruby aspect, um, you, you said you watched the show for 10 years. What, uh, what made you bring it into VR chat specifically? Um, of course, um, I remember, I think, I I remember there was this person, um, there was this person who made, like, um, a world of the Beacon Library, and it has, like, the avatars, and I remember going there for the first time, it says, oh my god, it looks exactly like the library in the show. (laughs) I was really shocked, and not only that, it has, like, it do have an upstairs that has, like, uh, like puzzles and all that kind of stuff, some stuff you can interact. They also have like avatars you can wear, like Ruby avatars from the characters to the villains to the Grim, all that kind of stuff. And I was really impressed. I was really impressed. And then when I come to VRC, I, I'm seeing more Ruby worlds getting created. <laughs> I'm seeing the school getting created. I'm get. I'm seeing a uh, veil getting created. Everything. It's like oh my god this is so amazing i mean that's like a really shocking to me as a ruby fan like they have they did every little detail from the show and even if it's not on the show they still add it which is totally 100 percent. yeah i mean it's really crazy as as somebody who's you know traversed in the many different types of fandoms in the vr chat platform it's definitely a it's a really cool experience uh, for a lot of the people who, you know, enjoy, you know, different types of, you know, fandoms, whether it be like uh, Ruby or uh, like Friday Night Funk and Undertale. Uh, The -hmm. list goes on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, So I guess you you were talking about the worlds and stuff and you were talking about uh, Vale. So one of the questions I wanted to ask, um, have you guys used the Revenant VR Vale world uh, that's one of the more like popular, you know, game worlds by Dinky Studios. Yes, we yes we actually been yes we actually been doing that. We've been doing that for our role plays, and sometimes we've been doing it for our game nights. So basically, it's real. So it's like really really fun. So you know, so if they don't understand the Ruby lore, you know, they can still have a little fun and get to get to know the surroundings a bit. If you had, because you said you used it quite often. Uh, have you actually reached out to uh, Dinky himself in that regard, or is it just kind of like, yeah, we just use his world type thing? Um, we for me, I, we just use his world type thing because seriously, he, I, I really, I really do like his worlds, but Remnant VR has to be one of my favorite worlds because it actually captured the inspiration of the show because because when I when I play with my friends it feels so like you're you're you actually step on this you're stepping on the series it's like whoa i'm actually on the show and then seeing like they actually add the creator of monty of course honoring him after he passed 10 years ago like whoa that's that's crazy like i get 100 percent. like that's that's really amazing no absolutely and uh Dinky, I'm going to be sending this to you, so you're definitely going to see this. Uh, yeah, you know, hit them up because they absolutely adore your world. Anyway, uh, back to the actual uh, episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's definitely uh, a cool experience. You know, it's definitely very well done. You know, you've used the Remnant VR Veil. You were talking about the library as well. Is there any other worlds um, that particularly uh, pertain to your guys' role play? Um, other than the two that we've already kind of briefly touched on? Um, of 
course, there's like uh, uh well, of course we use like different worlds. Like for example, um, I know we use like for example we use the get get lost forest for one of our sessions, and we also use um. We also we do use and we also try to find the world that has like represent like which which world should we use like for example we use if we for if we go to like a half life world and any half life world it says oh that definitely remind me of Atlas or something so that we can try to you know um try to think of something or or anything or if we go to a Star Wars world that has like you know it could be a different realm that we can go to. So basically, we try. So basically, my team tried to, you know, try the dick of the consequence. Try to think like which part should we, which, which one should we go, which one should we not, you know. Try to, you know, try to make sure like these sessions are more enjoyable and fun instead of, you know, clean and boring. Fair enough. Fair enough. I was gonna say, yeah. So, uh. Because I know it's a, um, it's not like a gigantic community, but it's definitely a well prominent community. Um, out of curiosity, how many um, of your members are actually staff? So right, so right now we, so right now we have like, uh, eight, I think we have like six members right now. But some, but some of our members are like offline. So basically, right now we're, right now we are currently four. But we, but we are, pl but we're planning to do applications for future D for future uh, positions. So like for example, we're planning to do a game night host. We're planning to do more um, dungeon master just in case if one of us are sick you know, are, are sick, can't do anything, they'll, like, you know, we'll take over, and that. So we're trying to find, like, good positions for future for future uh, members to join and help us as well. Okay, I gotcha. I will say, you know, with, with that in mind, kind of going into the more broad scheme of the community, you've done different types of roleplay events. Uh, I wanted to touch base on that specifically, because um, as you've probably seen in recent episodes I put out, I do have other role play uh, community leaders. So, what if you could give me a explanation of how an event is ran from your guys's community? Uh, what what is it like? Okay, so basically, like, um, so basically, Saturdays is our main role play. So, the, so we have to, so we always keep our session separate. So we have our main RP that we usually do. And we also have our RP text. So we just keep it separated. So if you are planning to come to one of our role play sessions, um, first you have to sign, you have to get a kit. You have to sign up a character sheet. That's like the only way we have free versions. We have the updated version. We have the second one with more details and we have the original. So basically, you'll like put like um, what's your character's name, um, where they're from, uh, something da 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 da, and the staff and I will review it. And if they and you know if it's good, we'll um we'll let you know. We'll give you a thumbs up. And if not, we'll we'll tell you um what are what you're missing. So if you're missing like oh like oh that we like oh your semblance is um. It's kind of short or something. Can you describe it a little bit longer? Or like, oh, your weapon. Um, it's it's. Not, I don't know what kind of weapon it is. Can you describe it a little bit for me? And once that's done, we'll um, we'll make once Saturday comes, we'll make an announcement on the Discord, letting you come to our VC, and to stay muted because we because we, we we always tell everyone to stay muted on the Discord just in case if there was a call emergency. And then once you're there, um, we, I type in the group that says like the world is open and then we'll start, and then everyone will start gathering themselves about this. If they're playing as a can canon character, they, if they play as a canon character, we also do auditions, like opening auditions. So for example, if you want to sign up for a canon character, um, let's just say, um, you be playing as, um, playing as Osbin and there's a sheet, there's a sheet on the Google and you fill it out and see, it's like, why, like I'm playing Osbin. Why would you do that? Why would you play Osbin? And then the staff and I will DM you about what time should we do your audition? And they will let me know. 
and it said like do you want to do a voice call edition or do you want to do a vrc edition sometimes we sometimes we do vrc and they'll tell like about yourself like what is your name what do you do tell me a little about yourself and do you did do you ever do role play larping or or vr or both and um they'll do a script from from the show or they can improvise and if um like different candidates so basically, like, if one person got the main role, but we also do backups, just in case, understudies. So if the person is sick, so the understudy can, you know, um, take their take their role for, you know, for the day or night or something. Because for me, I'm not the kind of person that says, um, you're not going to be in this role play, just only one, one person get out of here. No, My, our role play, we want everyone to have a good time. We want everyone to have fun because even though we're real, a little strict, but we want to have fun and have a little good time in our, in our role play server. Yeah, of course. Like, it's definitely, like, because realistically, right, you know, it's all a game. Um, we The main thing, and I, I appreciate that you keep that respect, um, that you just want to have fun. Because that's really what a lot of people look for when it comes to communities. You know, it doesn't matter what the role play theme is. That's the main thing. Um, so, we were, you were talking a little bit about the, um, like, the characters in particular and, like, canon characters and stuff. So one of the questions I was going to ask, um, since you brought that topic up, you it is a alternate universe like m crossover type theme. Um, out of curiosity, just for example's sake, like are, are there any other franchises that are like prominent within the role play, uh, like as it stands already as your community? I mean, right. So right now we're like we're right now we're using the Ruby lore for the first three seasons. Season so for season four, that's when things get. That's when we decided to do with the other um with the other franchises and series. Like for example, like if we want to do something like okay, so the students go to this portal and they go to um so let's say uh um the hell of a boss world and they get really confused. They they don't know where they are or something or if they or they went to a portal and they go to Gotham and, and they see like crazy it's like what's going to happen it's mostly like um the it's mostly like the Ruby X Justice League um comic and film that they do so basically we're trying to go with that in later seasons so right now we're only we're only seeing focusing on the first three seasons of Ruby to follow the Ruby lore and then when season four or beyond will you know We'll we'll go do we'll do more of those things. We'll do more like different worlds and stuff. I gotcha, I gotcha. So you know, so currently right now where it stands, you're only on season one, correct? Yes, we're yes, yes, we are currently in season one. We're cur right now we are currently in production for season two. So right now we're like doing script writing and also doing trying to doing open open auditions so people can, you know, join our role play because you know we want we want we want to make we want to make you know we want to make sure you guys have fun make sure there's no drama and all that kind because you know even because we want to you know we want you guys to have fun in the server and even though if like even though you didn't get the main role you can always get the understudy because you're substituting for someone else just in case if they're sick or not so yeah <laughs> fair enough fair enough so interestingly enough um you know with all that in mind it's definitely i could definitely see it becoming a an expansive type um of role play so correct me if i'm wrong but you 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 started this community pretty recently um it, like around what time did you start this community well for starters it actually started in 2022 actually a year ago actually a year ago so originally, so originally I was going to, um, so originally I was supposed to go to, originally, so after I left, I got really confused, like, there was not good, there was not any role plays that I liked and all that kind of stuff. Role plays that doesn't have PC and quest because it's hard to find good, 
roleplay that has PC and quest combined. And I said to myself, you know what? Why do I make a roleplay that PC and quest people come together and have this amazing time in the roleplay? Because it's so hard to find really good world, really good roleplay that has PC compa- uh, quest, compa- quest compatible because it's so hard for quest users, even if they have the standalone headset. It's just like really hard. So basically, I so basically I said, what should I start doing? And then I've been watching Ruby. I said, why don't why don't I don't start? Maybe I can start doing Ruby. And all of a sudden, I got this idea. Like so, the fir- like the first couple of years, um, that that didn't go well because a lot of people did join, but uh, um, they but a lot of people did join, but some of them did laugh because they think that I might not make it. So I was like this close of giving up. It's like I always say, like, should I should I shut down? Should I give up? Should I just? And I told myself, I don't. I don't want to give up. I don't want to. I just keep myself focused. And then, and then, luckily, my friends from the previous Ruby server um, decided to help me out with this. And even though it has been on a hiatus for like. It's been like a hiatus for two, for like one year, two years, and all that kind of stuff. And I try to, you know, even though it's really hard, like a lot of, like some of my friends, even people I met who do role play, decided to help me out, give me some rule, give me some tips and tricks, like how do I make my role play, how do I make the role play server more fun? What suggestions should I do? What should I, you know, make sure, or like give, like give me ideas. And then, and then when I heard that, Project Fest from last year was looking for communities. I said, maybe I should, maybe I should, you know, give it a try. So, so I decided to do a booth and, um, it was nerve wracking because at first I was afraid, like, what if no one comes? What if no one, no, what if no one would like it? And then, and then after the, after the free dates, 15 members joined. So I was in shock. I was in shock. I was crying. I was jumping for joy. I said, "Oh my god! I can't believe it! They want to see me. They want to see me succeed. Also, want to join this server." And it was like, "Whoa! That's that's really crazy." And I really hope that it could happen the same thing for this year's fest, because yes, we are attending this year. So we are hoping, and we are hoping and praying that more people could, you know, see our, see our, see what we do and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just, you know, let's, you know, to have some fun and all that and, you know, to, you know, make people feel welcome. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing. You know, it's, it's, and granted, huh, segue, uh, of course, uh, Project Fest is coming up. Uh, they just recently announced that their signups are now open. Uh, so as soon as this video is going live, uh, their signups should be still around. We'll see, depending yeah, on when until, this episode releases. Um, yeah. So like, I know, I know it's uh May twelfth. That's their deadline for like um signups. That's like their deadline. Oh, then yeah, this episode will be out before then. So, segue. <laughs> If you do have a community, make sure to go check out Project <laughs> Fest. Um, you know, they just like Aaliyah here in the Ruby Remnant community. Th- I am not sponsored, by the way. I, I know I have the pin. <laughs> I am not sponsored by PJKT. I'm I'm eventually it's gonna get to the point where I get asked that. I am not sponsored by PJKT. It is just a genuine <laughs> don't laugh. It's a genuine community that I recommend any creator or community, you know, representative to go check out. But Anyways, back to the main topic. Um, yeah, no, it's really cool that, you know, Project Community has definitely helped you in that way, you know. And, like, I do hope for the best in that case. You know, I do hope you continue to get more members. Um, so, besides Project Community, though, um, what is the what are some ways that your community has, like, advertised around, like, um, in general? Like, how have you guys attempted – before Project Community, let's put that into perspective um, – what are some ways that you guys have advertised your community in general? So we do have, uh, we do have a Twitter uh, or X. <laughs> we do have, we do have, a, we do have an X. We have an Instagram. 
Um, we've been, and also we're also part of different um, role play servers. So, so basically, if you see a bit, if you see the name Ruby and and it has like you know the information, the the information. It'll like you know, it'll take you straight to the Discord, or and we also have a V, we also have a VRC group as well, and um, we want to, and you know, to make sure like we're open, we're you know, we want to try to, even we're not trying to be this mega super VR role playing group like Neon Divide or or Purple Lotus or anything. <laughs> right now we're starting small, and then once we you know once we find out our next plan, you know we're 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 starting small right now. So right now we're doing Instagram and Instagram X, and of course our VRC, our our, v, our VRC group. I think and and we're also I think on uh vrc list i guess that's the website <laughs> i'd say we'll, we'll 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 throw them all as as it goes by yeah so yeah know, yeah yeah so with with that right you know you have all these social media platforms on your side um but i guess to add on to the question have you done any like recruitment inside of the vr chat platform like have you had like any uh outreach moments um like for your community we're at we're, we've been trying we've been trying to even though it's been like really hard because even though like for like for example um i know one person from um from the uh from the from from the event that you hosted um told me about like why don't you send me a why don't you send me a banner uh, why don't you send me a poster you know you can so we can advertise see if people want to you know want to join and then all of a sudden i put a post uh, all of a sudden i created a poster sent it to them and then all of a sudden we got like five members joining in our rp session and i was like it's like I sometimes like if there's like an if there's like someone who do like um small small role play small events and all of a sudden they'll like do you want to promote your server and I said sure and you know they'll tell me a little bit about it and if it's like good or bad so we try our best and that's all we you know that's all we can do within this VR chat space you know um, I mean. Sh- this, this podcast, for example, you know, was just a fun little project. And uh, now here we are, you know, working with many different types of creators and stuff, you know, and it's just, <laughs> uh, it's definitely as somebody who runs their own community, you know, it's more of a hangout community. It's definitely a uh, interesting way uh, to reach out to people um, by actually not even worrying about the social media side, but actually going into VR chat and kind of basing the outreach based on that. And it works for some communities, um, but some communities, maybe not so much. It just, it depends on like what they do, um, and how they go about talking to their people, uh, or to, to potential new people, I guess is what I should say. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm curious about uh so right now you're in season one so are all the seasons going to be based off of the series themselves or is it going to have like outlying factors that are just going to be like pure made by like the people who create the scripts like the role play uh i'm just kind of curious as like how how one to one uh for seasons one through three because i know season four you're wanting to go into the more like alternate Mm -hmm. reality um so what is so one one through three is it going to be like a one to one based off the series or is there going to be like other types of um other types of events inside the role play so right so right now we're just doing outline to see like inspiration we try to find like what should we do what inspiration do we have and like for and like for ep- so like for episode eight like for episode eight we did we did like uh the training a court we did like the training so l like let's do the training or on episode one we do the introduction of the characters like coming in and i know one episode we did like the students going to beacon for the first time meeting their professors and all that kind of stuff so we're we we like to i like to give out inspirations and also talk to the staff about an idea so we can try to you know 
be agreed on it. So of course, um, of course, my friend Raven. A uh, shout out to my friend Raven also, who's also doing the script. <laughs> he he always tried to he always tried to um, try to think of ideas like what should we do? What should we do? Because we have a we also have a Google form. We also have a Google Docs so to list it like ideas like. What do they want to do? Uh, what's the idea? So you know, if we can like understand understand it a little without going really really crazy. But sometimes we like to do improv. So sometimes we try to improv something. So <laughs> yeah. So of course we're, we're even though we're outlining, we're also getting we're also getting a lot of inspiration from the show. Hello everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a ko-fi so make sure you go check that out i uh, want to thank you all so much for watching let's get back into the video fair enough fair enough yeah so it's very interesting because i think so far you are probably one of the first ones that i know of uh, i guarantee there's a lot more i'm just stating what from my <laughs> personal experience you're one of the ones that i've known to actually base it strictly off of a, a shows or series um now of course you have like your video game role play groups um like just to name a few you have like the snowdenverse community with uh i'm gonna base it off previous episodes you have the snowdenverse community which is like undertale you have Kochino yakuza which is based off the like a dragon series or yakuza if you're from america um so to to actually delve into a i guess technically it's a web show technically it, w it would never air it on tv correct like i if i remember correctly it was only like no it it, it never aired on tv it's like it's like um an anime it's like an anime like um web series so basically like the first eight episodes like the first eight seasons um or volumes as they call it are on rooster teeth volume nine was on crunky crunchy roll for like one year and now it's officially on rooster teeth so so, so basically so yeah it's not on tv <laughs> it's not on tv <laughs> i was gonna say oh man this this actually reminds me um a couple years back and i don't remember when this came out so this might be a lot i might be showing my age by saying this uh i remember my stepmom's parents uh, we went over to their house for this is completely it's on topic, I promise. Um, but we know went over to their house for Christmas, right? And they they knew mm -hmm. I liked anime, they knew I liked video games. Uh I don't remember I'm I'm ninety percent sure on the number, but I remember specifically getting, I believe it was a Blu-ray DVD of I wanna say Ruby season four, I think. I'd have to double check. Um but th I think that was the first time I was actually introduced to the Ruby series. And like, I was like, I've never seen this before. What is it? So that was like my first introduction to the Ruby series. True story. True story, by the way. Um, I, yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah. So, you know, <laughs> to, to base a role play off of a show, you know, rather than a video game, uh, definitely, I bet comes with some challenges, um now out of out of curiosity um because i'm i'm this is just me being curious at this point uh have have you ever tried to reach out to rooster teeth in any sort of way um because i know there's some communities that have copyrighted uh material in them i'm just curious if you've ever like reached out in any type of way shape or form like like even like even though if like i wish i did before but right but for me I I want to try to, you know, not try to steal like, you know, some of the episodes that they did, but we, but I also want to try to think of it because even though we're taking inspiration, we also trying to create our own, we're trying to create our own storyline as well. But of course, um, even like, even like, even though this company is shutting down after 21 years, it's like really crazy, but we, like for example like we respect the show the community loves the show in fact the uh the animators the, the staff the crew and all that kind of stuff even the creator himself we definitely respect it we respected them because even though the show has been going on for 10 years and stuff we're like doing our best to make sure like like that's the reason that yeah so that's the reason why i'm doing an alternate universe 
because I'm trying, I'm not trying to take like, oh, my role play, my role play takes place on the actual show. Like, <laughs> my role play takes place on the alternate unit on the alternate universe where it's it's different. Like it's like diff like different parts like for example like um like in the show they like in the show they're huntresses in volume seven but in our but in our role play server they already been huntresses ever since they graduate from atlas and now they're and now they're professors in in beacon and of course the fall of beacon did happen but in our role play it did happen and we re we rebuild the school like years later we rebuild the school years later so the new generation can, you know, follow the footsteps. And like, and of course, we we always try find loopholes. We always want to try to find loopholes and you know try to try to find different parts without going too far from the show. Just like, just like you know, try to find like an original idea to getting some ideas so we can try to make the episode more you know understandable no yeah that makes sense uh I, I was just one of the things because i i know there's been some um there's been some communities that are based off of copyrighted material uh and either they've actually helped that said copyrighted materials owner or they've been asked to take it down um which is more rare but it does happen surprisingly enough um, mm -hmm. you know, or they at least like respect that they appreciate the craft so much. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was just one of those questions that I was just, it was just one of the curiosities. So with that in mind, you know, if there was ever a possibility per se of rooster teeth reaching out or the remnants of rooster teeth, but, um, um, <laughs> but sorry i had to make the joke it, it just was there um, <laughs> but it's it's one of those things uh if, if you were reached out uh by rooster teeth for whatever the reason may be you know what would as somebody who started this just very recently uh what would what would your reaction be if rooster teeth did reach out to you so if, if so if they did reach out to me like if they're saying like oh this is a character that 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 this is personal to us you can't use it and and of course I would email that's totally fine we'll we'll definitely drop it immediately or if they said like we want to say thank you because we know that you've been fans of the show um, um so much and uh, we definitely respect it I would email that's I'm really glad or something. Or if they say we would definitely like to help out, and I, and I would do okay, sure, just just let me know. So sometimes if if they get out like a like a like a different uh, definition or a different um, description, they'll like if it's personal to them or something. If it's like a personal character, personal location, or personal thing that they don't want us to use, I would tell them that's totally fine. That that's that, that's totally fine. We can drop it. I can talk to the cast and crew. We can come up with an original character. So you don't have to hear it again. So I like to be like very respectful. Yeah, of course. Uh, with that, you know, uh, first of all, that was a very professional response. I mean, first of all, my like I'm just saying, if for whatever reason some major entity contacted me, I'd probably shit bricks first and foremost, right? <laughs> like, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm just saying, like, you know, um, it it's definitely one of those things, like, because realistically, right, you don't expect those things to happen. You know, unless if you are actively pursuing it, you know, there's no way of telling when somebody of importance or the the original creator of something sees your essentially, I don't want to call it a fan work, but fan appreciation work, um, you know, in a way it, it just be a. It'd be an interesting experience to say the least. Let's go, let's go down, not to, you know, damper it, but let's go down that route a little more, you know, if not saying they would, not saying they would, <laughs> I just want to make it clear, it. I, I'm, I'm gonna zoom in, not to say they would, because if they do, it'll look bad on them. I'm zooming in the camera, right? You can't see it, but I'm zooming in the camera. <laughs> Don't do this. If for whatever reason you see this episode, don't do this. But what I was going to say, if for whatever reason 
they did do a DMCA takedown, you know, what would be your response in that regard? Of course, I would. I would totally respect their orders if they want me to take take it down. Like, um, like we won't post it because, of course, for for like for us, we don't have a YouTube channel. Like, we don't have a YouTube channel. We don't like record the whole thing and post it on YouTube and like saying that for sure. For most mostly, I just I just like to you know record it on my Quest headset and just save it for memory. I'm I'm not that kind of people who record their deep their their role play session with a show and all of a sudden they start recording it and all of a sudden send to youtube and all of a sudden get like a little uh little angry note from rooster teeth like they you should have done that yada 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 <laughs> no this is just for fun we're only we're, we're only doing this role play just for fun we're not getting paid we're not doing nothing we're just here to have fun fair enough so I mean, that's good, first and foremost, you know. Um, I guess I'm curious more on, because we, we've talked about the good, we've talked about the potential bad. Anyway, um, so one of the things that I'm curious about, you know, you have all these different, you know, storylines. Because uh, I, I did a little research on, you know, the as little research as I did uh, <laughs> with the uh, with the Discord <laughs> server. Um, so what what exactly entails um, this season like events? Do you have a set limit for each season or is it, you know, is it just goes by script or is it completely like improvised in that aspect of like how long the season lasts? Essentially, what determines how long a season lasts? Well, right now we're cause right now um, for us, it's a little mixture of both. Like something like if something that we want to add on the script, but also they want to do something improv, and also we it's kind of like a mix. So we want so we it's like a mix. But if they like, okay, I want you to read like if we want to say, okay, I want you to read this from the script, or said I want you to do this improv, do this thing like an improv or something, and all that. So we <laughs> we try to you know like we're trying to let people know like if they want to do it from if we want to do it from the script or if we want to do an improv or we can just do it on both because even though like I'm trying to make the server more fun not like boring or anything they have to read a script like some movie or TV show or something so I it's just I just want them like you know to have like if if we're, like saying if we're doing a script we can do the script thing for a little while or if we're doing the script on like only on this scene or something or do improv only on this scene we'll let them know and all that kind of stuff so we'll um we'll let them know Fair enough. So, you know, as I'm as I'm going through um, some of the things that you guys have done, it's one of those things. There's only so much that you can do. Is there any plans to do like a bigger like like a bigger event or a bigger production, per se, um, when it comes to the the RP community? Yeah, like because so, so, um, we are hoping and really hoping like we so the staff and I've been talking about doing a panel event for Project Fest because of course we want to tell we want to tell everyone our story like the history how did we come here how did we got started and all that kind of stuff so they can answer questions or if they're interesting you know to meet the staff and all that kind or of course of course if we want to plan like you know an open house. They'll like say you could be this character or you could be this character, like improv and all that. And if you like it, you know, just hit me a DM or something or we'll we'll give you an audition. Or if you have a kid, if you have a character, your own character, you can, you know, um, fill it out and we can add on the show. So we're trying. So yeah. So we're trying because right now we're doing something small and we're hoping in the near future we can do a little bit of something bigger, not like Neon Divide bigger, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> so fair enough yeah so this is really cool that you you plan to do bigger things not counting project community though um you know is there any other like not counting conventions i guess is what i'll say you know is there any like solo like bigger solo solo in the sense of like the community by itself 
is there any potential plans uh for like a bigger project i think like doing like a like a mint like a q like a q and a with the with the creator of the role play they'll be like they'll like answer questions about how do i how how like how did this person apply how did this uh how they apply for or if they want to be a, if they want to you know be a staff member and help us out, or if they want to be a canon character or something, they'll like you know they'll answer. The, well, I'll answer. I'll answer the question, and you know like if they want like you know if they want the information, I can like always they can always send me a DM, and I can always send them like I can always send them like a like a card or something to make sure you know everything goes really well and good because you know. <clears throat> Like right, like even even though I'm still thinking about doing solo, but I want to try to you know make sure that the server is doing very well, making sure that because we're taking one day at a time. No, that's fair. I was gonna say you know because as somebody who's also worked with many different communities, um, you definitely get the feeling to try running your own solo content. Um, hence why this this project came in you know, this podcast, uh, it's, it's definitely one of those things of getting to know, not only for my sake, but for the public audience as well, because yeah, there's a lot of VR chat players, but you know how many gamers are out there that have never heard of this platform before, or at least have not been on the platform? Millions, millions of gamers out there. And while yes, my, my podcast, you know, typically refers to these amazing projects in VR. It's also a way for these creators and stuff to get their name out there. And especially with the, the Ruby community, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully this episode helps maybe get some new members with you because that's, that's my goal with this podcast is to not only help the creators showcase but to actually help the growth of said creators and communities with that it's one of the because we're we're getting we're getting close to the end of the episode so one of the things i wanted to ask what essentially for you specifically not necessarily community but for you as a creator what was your first experience of uh ruby like rwby as a whole <clears throat> of course ruby is definitely special to me because I mean it because yeah, it does take even though it has a good fun approach but it does take like you know talk about dark themes like um for example they talk about death or something or stuff they, they always do a little bit of warning like this comp this thing will mention death and you know, they always have a viewer in advance their will of eyes and they'll talk about like like a death scene or they talk about like something horrible or anything it's just like really inspiring when I meet people who say like hey this show changed my life or hey i like this show and all that kind of stuff and i know one person say one i know this one person got got engaged because they watched the same show and they got married and all that kind of stuff so like this show is so special because even though the show has been going on for over 10 years and even though the content's still going i mean this, this show is so special to fans because this was like the first ever anime like show that I like to watch, which not on TV, but also on the website says, oh, wow, I like this. I really, really like this. And I really hope that everyone can, you know, can experience that if they want to watch like the first volume or even read the comics or, you know, get the merchandise and stuff, listen to soundtracks. They'll like understand the, you know, what they mean group that the show means to them that's actually kind of inspiring the only thing that i am a little bit hesitant on is the whole like you, they got in, they got engaged or married you said oh no, so no no it's like um i know like there's like a whole bunch of youtube videos of people who are ruby fans as me got like they met for the first time they getting they got engaged because they watched the show or like um like saying like I watched the show like I watched the show because uh my girlfriend slash boyfriend you know got into it and I got hooked or this person says I watched the show for the first time ever cuz I didn't I didn't like anime at first but ever since I watched it um now I um I like it you know and all of a sudden they go to conventions and all of a sudden they go to like convention RTX and of course they'll do some stings and all that and not only that um of course Lindsay Jones who voiced Ruby is now a VTuber of course watching her from stream and <laughs> yeah so that's that's, that's the reason why I could... 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and of course, though, they, they like, the fandom doesn't want to let go. They really don't want to let this thing go because this was, like, their first, second, or third show. Or maybe they'll watch the show until they die or something, or until the show ends. Like, they love the show, they love the franchise, and more importantly, they they love their creator who create this wonderful show after he passed away. And, of course... I'm very happy that this show can give like me hope and stuff. And of course, of course, getting also with the cast and crew doing an amazing job with each volume after volume, releasing the DVDs and all that kind. And you know, it's just, it's just real. It's just really, really amazing. And I really hope that everyone who loves the show can get inspired. And if you guys haven't not seen the show, um, I really recommend you can watch the. The watch episodes. Watch all the episodes. The episodes are free on Rooster Teeth. Um, <laughs> you can also watch. They also have different spin-off series like World of Remnant. You can learn about the stuff of Remnant, Ruby Chibi, which is also one of my other favorite series. <laughs> and also they have like uh, board games and stuff. And oh, crap, that's fine. <laughs> sorry, and... it's sorry. Right. We won't. We won't. We won't talk about that. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So basically. So yeah, I really, I really hope that, um, I really hope that if you get a chance to watch this show, get, give it a chance. I mean, if you, if you don't want to, if you don't want to keep watching it, that's totally fine. But if you want to keep watching it, go right ahead. I mean, it's your choice. And that's the reason why this role play means the world to me because I, cause of course I met friends who love the show. I have friends who do role play and stuff. I also have friends who help me out and stuff and also partner with me and, and trying to, I am trying so hard not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't do that. I don't want you, I don't want you to be the first person on my podcast to cry now. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to make you yeah, emotional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So I really hope that you guys can come to this role play. It's really fun. And trust me, it's, Trust me, it's really fun, and we and we want you guys to come here. We 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 welcome everyone with open arms to join our server. So if you guys want to join, please do. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to DM me, and I'll be answering as many questions. Also, the staff as well. Of course, shout out to Raven, Cherry, of course, Darf, and also everyone who been been there for me since day one. Of course, I love you guys, and I can't wait to keep doing this for the rest of my life because this is like my first ever project by RP. It, <laughs> my first RP, so my first RP project, and I really hope like. And I really hope someday, if I'm ready to give it up, I'll give it. I'll give it to the next person, and all. <laughs> I'll give it to the next person to follow because I want. I want someone to want them to follow my footsteps after you know I decide to say I'm retiring from this uh, role play, but I'm giving it to someone else. Fair. I mean, you kind of already. You already did my fucking job. Um. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well no like the, the whole i was i was pointing to the camera so you could like stare at the camera while saying all that uh but that's a, that, that that's fine it's fine um but no yeah so it, it's really cool that you know you, you you admire you know all the people that have supported you and everything that's a really qu qualifying trait for a good person um so with that in mind um where can you know i know you 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 already kind of answered most of it already but i'm gonna replay replay the question anyway <laughs> where can people find you and you know how can they get in contact with you okay so basically i'm mostly i mostly have i'm mostly in different um different communities so if you see me around vr chat like for example if i'm in like um the no friends friends club uh shout out to kuro or the mighty gym or anything you'll see this uh you'll see the name of course or if you want to follow me you can go to my socials uh, of course you can go to my instagram my vr instagram alia 1020 alia 1023 that's my instagram and also my twitter we also have a twitter for our role-playing group of course is uh it, of course is uh, ruby jbr um same same thing goes with our instagram as well <laughs> yes and also we are planning and we are also planning to do um we are also planning to do staff of course we are even though we're short amount staff we are are planning to do um applications so if you guys want to you know 
help us out or if you guys have a role play if you want to partner with us feel free you can also if you can also hit me up on dms at alia 9710 and um hit me up if you have any questions so yeah fair enough fair enough um well that is unfortunately the end of the episode um so <laughs> alia i want i want to thank you for coming on uh first and foremost uh it's it's been a blessing to have you on um and yeah so make sure to go check out the ruby journey beyond remnant roleplay community um they are you know like we've had on the podcast for the last almost hour now you know they do awesome stuff regarding the uh ruby uh web series you know make sure to go check them out make sure to follow all the links which will be down in the description uh so once again alia thank you for coming on the podcast um hopefully hopefully it didn't seem too long for you <laughs> but no you're good you're good thank, thank you so much thank you so much for having me this uh, this has been a really good opportunity and and I'm really glad that you know that i got to reach out to you and uh, you know to do this podcast <laughs> of course of course so with that ladies and gentlemen everyone inside and outside the ballpark that is it for episode 10 of the Novid notes podcast uh featuring miss Aaliyah here so thank you once again for watching the episode if you like the episode and you've started coming back to the channel make sure to click that subscribe button because why not you've already started coming back anyways and we'll see you i still said it again i literally this i did a second retake and i still said it again <laughs> whatever it's fine i'll see you in the next episode take care bye <laughs> Hehehehe <laughs>